Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video is going to be talking about multi-dimensional arrays, how to use them, how to iterate through them, and everything good like that. But first, you gotta check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now, it first helps to understand a single dimensional array, which I'm not gonna go over a ton because we've talked about them a ton in this series but it's gonna look something like this. And then you can put elements inside of this initialization. So the size of this thing is going to be three. Now a multi-dimensional array works very similar, but the only difference is you add another set of square brackets here and you can add multiple sets of elements inside of the initialization. So that could be a set. Here can be another set and here can be even another set. Now when you compile, you might get something a little weird. You can see it says array has incomplete element type int array. So we're basically making an array of arrays and the outer array needs to know the size of the arrays it's going to contain. So to do that, we just throw the size in here. Now for a single dimensional array, it can infer that size from the elements you're adding to it. But for a multi-dimensional array, you have to put that second size explicitly. I'm not entirely sure why, but it is just one of the requirements that you need to do. If there's any way around that that you guys know of, please leave a comment in the comment section below. But until then, we're just going to manually put that size because I'm pretty sure that's a requirement. Now the size here is going to be inferred by how many collections we have in here. One, two, three. So this is going to be a three by three multi-dimensional array. The size is still static. It works exactly like a normal array. Now the sizes here are again the max size you can have it larger than you need, and then you can implement basically different sizes of arrays within that. However you wanna do it, that's totally up to you. There might be a better data structure out there if you're looking to do something more complicated. I really recommend this kind of 2D array if you're thinking of your data as if it's a table where you have columns and rows. So let's go through the process to iterate through this array. We're going to have two for loops. So a nested for loop is needed when you want to iterate through a 2D array. If you had a 3D array, then you would need three for loops. So that's the outer for loop, and then this is the inner for loop. Now, before we get to the for loops, I do just wanna compile and make sure we have that array syntax down and that everything is good to go for the for loops. So you can see we can compile, so it seems to be good. Now let's get back to those loops, and here's how I like to think about it. If you visualize this in a different way, each one of these collections is considered a row. So we're first going to go through this collection, then this collection, and then this collection. So each one of these will be one iteration, and we're gonna do that in the outer for loop. The inner for loop will go through each of the elements in each row. So that will be the column. So we'll create a variable, we're gonna call it R. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it R for row. A lot of people will still use I, and then they'll use K or J for the inner for loop, but I'm going to use R for row and then C for column. This is a little clearer for me. We're gonna go until R is less than three and R plus plus. Then for the inner for loop, we're going to say int c equals zero, c less than three, c plus plus. Now in here, we can output the value. We're going to access grades, and we're going to pass in r for the row and c for the column. And then I'm going to do a tab character. Now after each iteration of the inner for loop, I'm going to output a new line. Beautiful. Now let's output this thing. It did nothing, and that's because I accidentally put this return at the top. <laughs> Come on, Caleb, you should have this down by now. <laughs> All right, so make sure that return is down at the bottom. I was like, what is going on? All right, let's try this again. When we run this, you can see it outputs our array exactly how we have it defined. Beautiful. So that is how you work with multidimensional arrays. You can also try other data structures. For example, you might try nested vectors, and I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to basically have a standard vector, and this is going to contain a standard vector of a particular type. We'll just go with int. This will be called grades, and we're going to assign this a value. What are we going to assign it? Well, we're gonna assign it exactly what we had in the previous example. So here's how you would create a standard vector, and it kind of works the same way as a multidimensional array. In fact, you don't have to change the for loops or anything. 
Now we want to make sure that we include vector. And when we compile, we need to use the C11 standard. There we go. Now when we run, you can see we get the exact same output, but now we don't have to worry about max sizes. It's not statically sized. It's a lot easier to work.